Hi, welcome to this Code Rage session. My name is Serena DuPont. I'm one of the product managers in Rad Studio. And here with me today is also Henry Liu from our R&D team. In this session, we're going to talk about visual life bindings and give you an overview of some of the features that we've introduced in Rad Studio XC3. Now, to give you a quick overview about life bindings in general, it was introduced in XC2. Uh, life bindings works for both FireMonkey and VCL. It is based on relational expressions called binding expressions. Now, those can be unidirectional or bidirectional. We also provide standard converters out of the box. You can also add your own custom converters. And life bindings can be used at both at the design time and at runtime. So in the Visual Life Bindings Designer, we're basically using these components that are built on top of these relational expressions that are based on RTTI. That's actually what powers everything that is Live Bindings. We included standard converters out of the box that allow you to bind implicitly string fields to integer fields, flow fields to string fields, and it will do the conversions for you behind the scenes. And it's important to note that you can actually plug into the system where if you have custom user types or unsupported conversions out of the box. You can plug in and register your own converters, and you can actually access what's there in the bindings list object. In addition to converters, we also have methods where um, relational expressions can directly invoke like into string, to string, format, for example, or custom formatting strings, things like that can also be plugged in. Now, Visual Life Bindings in Rad Studio XC3 provides you with a Visual Life Bindings Designer surface that enables you to visually bind component properties and members. So you can bind data and properties simply by drawing lines between objects. And as you can see in the screenshot here, we have an edit one with a text property and a label one with a text property. And we want to have the text that I enter in the edit field appear on the label. And if I clicked on the edit one text property, it would highlight any bindable members in green, in this case, the label one text, the text property. And it's also highlighting the three dot menu in green, which indicates that there are additional properties that I haven't bound to yet that I can expose. And when I click on that three dot menu, it shows me all the other bindable members that are available for label one dot text that I can then add to my label one component in the life bindings designer that I can then visually bind to. In addition, the Visual Life Bindings Designer also introduces layers management. So you can organize large numbers of bindings into Photoshop-like layers and just drag a bounding box over your components or shift select. Select like multiple components that are shown in the Life Bindings Designer and then right click and add them to a new layer. And you can toggle visibility between the layers. So it allows you to visually organize your project, which is very useful if you have a lot of components on your form. Also, with Visual Life Bindings, we've introduced several new components. One of those components we're going to go over today, which is the prototype bind source component, which allows you to quickly prototype an application and then go from prototyping to production by switching the data source. Today in this session, we're going to show you some hands-on examples that range from working with components to prototyping an application, moving from prototype to production, working with life bindings actions and FireMonkey applications, and then also show you how layers management works. Now, the first example that we're going to have a look at is how to bind an edit control to a label and a button. This is just a, a basic example of working with some components in the life bindings designer. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can bring up the visual life bindings designer can either go to the uh, view menu and select Life Bindings Designer. We could right click a component as well and select Bind Visually. Now in this case it has selected my component because I chose the Life Bindings Designer menu through the right click menu. It selected my button here and also my button in the Life Bindings Designer and it's highlighted that in blue so this is the active control and it's showing me the other controls that I can bind to so I can just click and drag and I'm binding my button one to my edit one. And if I select a label, I can now bind my label one to my edit one. As it shows me that I can visually bind to that because it's highlighted in green. Rearrange, and if I hit run, you can, anything I type is going to show up on all the controls. 
Now, Life Bindings also works with VCL applications. Let me start with a VCL Forms application. I'm going to place the same three controls onto my form. I'm going to bind the edit to the button on the caption and the edit to the label caption property. I'm going to select Track, which is going to track my entry, and I'm going to click Run. And then whatever I type in the edit is also going to show up on the button and the label when I hit enter. If you have a closer look at life bindings, you can also go to the different bindings that have been created here. This was a um, link control to a property for both of these, as you can see. And you can have a look at some of the other properties. You could also switch that in here. You could switch the bindings in here as well. Um, and what is what components bound to what you can choose from different um, properties for the life bindings binding as well by looking at the life bindings properties in the object inspector. I'm going to start out with a new FireMonkey desktop application and I'm going to show you the prototype bind source component. Now this is a great component for prototyping your application as it provides you with a bunch of sample data that you can use. And then after you've prototyped your application, you can switch from prototype to production by switching the data source. So I'm going to right click my prototype bind source component and select add field. And I'm going to shift select to select multiple entries here but I can also just click on one and you can select whether or not you want to repeat the values as it goes through the different sample data. You can look at some of the values that are given for that particular data field and you can also choose from different data types here as well as you see. So I'm going to shift select and hit OK and then you see them all represented down here. Now one of the things I can do is I can select a grid and I can quickly populate my grid with all the values that are shown, all the members that I've exposed for this um, data source by clicking and dragging from the asterisk from the prototype bind source to the asterisk of the grid. And that's going to populate my grid with the, all the sample data that I had selected previously. Now I also want to have a way of going through that sample data, navigating through that sample data. A couple of ways I can do that. I can either go to my tool palette and search for the bind navigator or I can right click my prototype bind source and select add navigator it's going to automatically bind the navigator into the prototype bind source which you can see here that it has the same name it says navigator prototype bind source to indicate that it's bound to the prototype bind source component also for the navigator you can enable the apply updates and cancel updates functionality as well and you'll see the additional buttons will be shown here in addition, I can also bind the sample data to other controls. For example, I want to bind it to a label, and I want to show the bitmap name on the label. Click and drag. Let me rearrange this. And then I'm going to run this application. And you can see here, as I step through the different entries, the label property is kept in sync with the bitmap name as well, since they're all bound to the same data source. So now I'm going to place a client data set onto my form and I'm going to load some sample data. This is the sample data you can find in your samples folder. And now there are a couple steps that you have to follow, but they make it really easy to switch the data source. You can actually switch the data source in one step by multi-selecting all the bindings. And if you're on a Mac running VMware Fusion like me to run Windows on the Mac, um, the shortcut is you have to hold down Control and Command to Shift Select. And if you're on Windows, you can just Shift Select by holding down the Shift key. Now, in this case, I've bound the prototype bind source 1 uh, bitmap name property to the label and text property. Now, my client data set does not have a bitmap name 1 property. So in order for this rebinding to occur properly and quickly, I have to go ahead and change the name so that the member names sync up. So in this case, I'm just going to click on the field, and I can go to my object inspector here, and I can quickly change the name. 
And now when I multi-select my bindings, it's going to automatically reroute all the links after I switch the data source. So you multi-select, and then you go to your data source, and you change it to client data set. And this reroutes the links for you automatically. And in this case, as you will see here, I'm using the sample data, the BioLife sample data. It shows me the angelfish, which is the first one selected. Um, it, it has populated a grid with my data from my client data set, and it's also showing the data on my label. So if I run this, see that I can step through the data and everything is kept in sync as well. Now, Live Bindings also introduces Live Bindings actions in XC3. I'm going to start out with a new FireMonkey application. Now, this also works really well if you are navigating through any type of data. And in this example, I'm going to show you a quick example using the Edit Control and two buttons. And I want to navigate through data that is shown on the Edit Control, and I want to be able to go to the next value and the prior value. I'm also going to place a prototype bind source. You could also hook this up to your database or client data set, of course. And I'm going to select the edit control. And I'm going to right click the prototype bind source first on my form add field. And I'm going to add a number field. And I'm going to bind that into my edit control. In addition, I'm going to place an action list onto my form. And Actions for FireMonkey is a new feature in Rad Studio XC3 as well. Now we have Actions for FireMonkey, so we can go ahead and um, place an action list component onto our form. And I'm going to select the button 1. And then under Action, I'm going to select New Standard Action, Live Bindings. And I'm going to select TFMX Bind Navigate Next. And then here I'm going to select button 2 and this is going to select a prior value new standard action live bindings and I'm going to select TFMX bind navigate prior uh, a couple other things we have to do is expand this menu here and we're going to have to select the data source for both of our controls and I'm going to hit run and see that the prior button is grayed out it's kept in sync so we've reached the last value and we can navigate through our data. You can also convert this form to a Metropolis UI form for Windows 8 style applications and um, we could style this to look like a flip view control which is a commonly used slideshow component you will see on Windows 8 but it's also used to navigate through data as well and it's a styled button that has a back arrow and a front arrow in the Windows 8 style. In order to do that, we would just select our button control, browse down here to the style lookup property, and then we can type in or we can scroll down, flip view button, flip view right button, and flip view left button. We also have to go up here and clear the text property so we don't have the text overlaying on top of the graphic. We want to do that in the Life Bindings properties. And hit Run. You can see as I navigate to last value, it's also going to gray out my control here as well. Now in the Life Bindings Designer, we also have the ability to work with layers and offer layers management. And this is the default layer. As you see, the layers menu is shown right here. And this is the default layer. You can toggle the visibility on and off if you add additional layers. Let's say I'm going to add another button to my form here. And I want to show this button on a different layer. So I can select it over here in my Life Bindings Designer, right-click it, select Layers, Add to New Layer. I could double-click this to rename it if I wanted to. I could also now add another control, like a label, to my form. Select that, right click, layers, and I can either add that to a brand new layer or I can add it to that existing layer that I've just created. And now you'll see as I switch toggle visibility that I'm able to turn on and off the different layers. Now also another thing to note is that next to your form name it displays the selected layer. 
which is really helpful in cases where you have the layers menu collapsed and you want to see what layers you have selected. So for example, if I place another label onto the form here, and I'm going to expand this, I'm going to select the label, right-click right -click the label, select Add to New Layer, and I collapse this. Now it shows me that I have layer 0 and new layer 1 both selected. If I switch that one off, it shows me that I just have new layer 0 visible. Let me go back to the default layer. One of the things you could also do is if you didn't want to work with layers, in some cases you could of course also at any point in time select a component that's shown in Life Bindings Designer and select Hide Elements. You can also um, show them again by clicking anywhere in empty space, right clicking and selecting show and hide elements and then you can select which elements you want to show. In addition in tools options in the Life Bindings Designer you have the ability to change some of the settings and this includes the excluded and included items list and also whether or not you want to show the Life Bindings wizard in the right click menu. Yeah so these these excluded items and included items are a global setting, global default setting for all applications. Um, and as you can see, as you make modifications in the Visual Live Bindings Designer, whether it be position, hidden items, shown items, layers, they are all persisted in a separate VLB file that is on the same level of each unit. So if it was unit one dot pass, you would have a unit one dot VLB. And these files can be thrown away, that's fine. The only things you would change, lose is layer names, for example, uh, and positions, obviously. Now, talking about the Life Bindings Wizard, if you select a component on your form and right-click it, I had selected in the Tools Options menu to enable the Life Bindings Wizard on right-click. It is now context-sensitive if I select the component first, and then I can select to link the property of a button to another control, for example, using the wizard. The wizard provides another way of working with life bindings. And also, you can also access it from down here. Now, in addition, you can also zoom in and out. Uh, you can reset it to the actual view. You can fit it into the entire view. Those are some of the options that are presented here. The refresh or re rearrange is a good way of uh, rearranging the layout. There's also a refresh designer function and a save to image. And what that does, it allows you to save this as a bitmap for a future reference. So you can save your layout as a bitmap. Now the refresh designer is a really good way of um, populating this with um, newly added data. For example, if you're working with a data module or you've changed anything and you want to make sure that everything's showing up in the Life Bindings Design, I'll show you an example here. If I select Add New Other and I select to add a data module to my project and I add another prototype bind source, and I would go back to my main project and I would select File, Use Unit, and I'm going to use the Data Module Unit. I don't see the Data Module Unit showing up right here. I would right click and select Refresh Designer and then it appears here and I will keep it in sync. So that's a good way of working with the right click menu as well. You can also scale it, etc. So the Life Bindings Designer and Visual Life Bindings really makes it a lot easier to visually bind data to your controls and uh, work with data bindings visually. There was one question from the previous session about using objects, just plain old objects versus things that inherit from T component in your application. And uh, Jim Turney has blogs that talk about how you can do this. Uh, also, uh, Malcolm Groves. And so we'll get you the links. You can just search for uh, li visual live bindings or live bindings and objects, and you'll find those blog posts. But I'll, uh, I'll make sure to get those links uh, for you as well. Um, okay. And then uh, here's a question. Could you add a live binding if a variable changes at any time? Does uh, Let's see. If label, label caption changes at any time, uh, Try, uh, I'm trying to read your sentences here, and it's it's hard. Um, maybe it's that discussion, Henry and Serena, about you know when you're in an application that has live bindings with it, whether it's a VCL or FireMonkey application, and you you're changing, let's say, the value of an edit box. Um, 
in FireMonkey, as you make the change, then the light bindings will fire. I think in VCL, you can move off the control so that it's posted as an update, in a sense, to the control, and then the light bindings will fire. But I think Jim told me uh, there's a method you can call to to say, do some update in your code, maybe for VCL apps. I think there's a track changes or something like that on the control as well. I think there's a a property on the control that you can enable. Well, the, well, the track change, well, the track change property uh, just basically simulates the behavior between um, FireMonkey and VCL, so it makes those two behaviors similar. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, but actually, on the bindings list component, uh, I think there is a notify uh, method that basically allows you to explicitly. Uh, tell the engine to process some updates on a given component or all the components, uh, live bindings components that are uh, set up. And then there was a question Ahmed asked, why can't I bind a track bar to an edit? Right, so I think I answered this yeah. one by typing, but um, I can go over it again. So, I mean, there's basically just a standard set of um, a standard live bindings that we can provide out of the box, and it, I guess this is just one that didn't make the cut. Uh, but this is easily extendable by adding observer support to either the track bar or the edit, depending on which one is notifying uh, which other component. And uh, once you add observer support, uh, the given components can be set up in the you know, live bindings designer, just like the existing ones. Let's see. Can I rearrange components in the grid application for move resize and so on? I'm not sure if that's the grid part. If you're talking, if he's talking about in the live bindings designer, there's there's right mouse click layout. There's you can drag things around anyway. Unless unless you're talking about the um, the, the Metropolis UI grid application. Ah, okay. In that case, you can actually select the list box, and once you bind your um, data source to the list box and you change the item style to Metropolis UI, you can then go ahead and uh, you can actually change the uh, uh, layout. It could be the, either be vertically or horizontally. So it can either be a horizontal layout or a vertical layout uh, as well. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Could you? Oh, we did that one. Well, I'm trying to find because they're intermixed. Some people were still putting in questions for the for the product address. So let me go and find. Let me scroll down. Okay. And oh, Troy was saying if you add a, an edit to a label caption, I have videos that show that uh, for VCL and FireMonkey. I just connect the two, and uh, and as you're doing things, uh, you'll see the updates happen or the bindings fire. And I think all those videos are on our YouTube channel at yeah. youtube.com forward slash Embarcadero Technet. Yep. Will visual live bindings be available when people are building mobile applications? Yes. It's all design yes, time, and right? actually, uh, if you're part of the beta, um, I didn't show that today, but uh, if you are an XE3 customer and you participate in the beta, you can try that out yourself as well. Okay. Uh, oh. Let's see. How about how? Uh, there's always the question about performance when you're using live bindings versus code. So, uh, how she? How do we? Ashitha. Asks, how about performance in live bindings? Is it slower than writing code? Uh, there's actually no, there shouldn't be any performance hit by using uh, visual live bindings uh, because essentially it's just creating these runtime components for you. And the designer is just a representation of the links you have set up in your application. Uh, Ahmed asks, is it possible to save the data generated by the prototype bind source? to an actual database? Uh, prototype and data set to an actual data set. Uh, you would have to write code, right? Write some code, yeah, yeah. to handle that. Yeah. And you just iterate through the rows of, right. the, of, the, of the prototype bind source that's connected to right. a grid or wherever and right. write it out to wherever you want. OK. Uh, where is that track change property located? I don't have the ID on my machine loaded right now, but uh, I would search search for that in go to docwiki.embarker.com. You can 
there's a search box for the doc wiki, put in track change. I believe the property is actually just track. Okay, track. Um, and that should be a VCO specific property. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's not like mining related. I'll take care of that later. Uh, other questions for Serena and oh, so, uh, Roger wants to become a live bindings master. Um, well, there's lots of sessions on live bindings, including not only this one, but Jim Tierney uh, has an session uh, look on the schedule that is is all about sort of live bindings and advanced live bindings. We have sessions from Code Rage Six on live bindings. Uh, we have other videos. Go ahead. And do visit his blog, Jim Tierney's blog. He has a lot of information there that is, is very useful. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Can one easily bind properties of any T object descendant to UI control, such as to get it and so on? And again, uh, Jim Tierney has blog posts about how to bind objects. Uh, so does Malcolm Groves. Uh, Damian Bootsma. So what I'll try to do is collect all those links into a blog post sometime today if I can come up for air. Maybe Serena or Henry can post a blog post about how to bind objects and just point to the other blog posts that show you how to share. Sure, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, well, Henry and Jim write a book on this so I can get them to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, you guys. Don't spend all that time developing the product. Write books. <laughs> Henry's always happy to give his autograph, right, okay. Henry? Especially to you, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to see you, Matt. Um, and I showed how to connect to a form, but again, a form inherits from T components. So I need to do some more short videos to take all the blog posts and show how to bind objects. Um, okay. I think that's most of the questions, unless people, we have a couple more minutes if you want to ask. Uh, Additional live bindings questions. You also have Serena here, so if you have any questions on the products, on HTML5 Builder and so on, I know it's not the session, but we have a little bit of her time here. Oh, Warren Postma said, this is the biggest new WoW demo feature in Delphi since version 1, and the classic live data design time demos, meaning the visual live bindings. We agree. Well, thank you. You know, we the team here put in a lot of great work in the, getting the live bindings designer to work the way it does and um, adding a lot of new components and functionalities to life bindings in general and I think it's a really powerful feature. I think the other thing you mentioned was to take a look at uh, the definition on DocWiki of T adapter bind source. You'll normally see the prototype bind source and the and the the bind DB what is it bind DBX or bind source DBX mm -hmm. which is the binding to a DB Express a provider of some kind or, or SQL connection. But check out the T adapter bind source. That's the key. Right. When you want to do objects and do all sorts of other things. Yeah, that would allow you to expose, you know, certain member, uh, you know, whatever names of, like if you had a T person and you had a name field, last name field, address field, and you can expose those fields at design time in the designer. And at runtime, those would just be, uh, you know, point to the same field name, same member names of that custom user object. Now again, Henry, you still, a lot of this information is based on the runtime type information, right? The bindable members and so on. So if you've created your own objects like employee or whatever, you're going to need to compile those, right? And have them available somehow? Or is it okay just to have them in the editor and the live bindings will find them? Uh, for custom user objects? Yeah. Uh, well, that's the idea. I mean, in using the adaptive bind source, you, you declare... Uh, explicit member names and these member names are a certain type uh, but at runtime they'll actually map to the real uh, user properties and you know RTTI will just figure out the conversions as needed uh, using the existing output converters that are built in to uh, live bindings yeah. and these output converters you can extend if uh, the standard ones we provide don't support the conversions you need Right, and that was available in XE2 that right. we have examples. I think Jim had a blog and in his right. Code Rage 6 session of how you can register and create your own yep. custom converters and, and, and other bindings. Um, I some, and maybe, I'm not sure if this is for you or Jim, I, I sometimes get confused between all the bind objects that were there from XE2 and the quick binding or the I don't know, quick bind or quick binding bindings, believe, yeah. uh, components that are now in XE3 that are related to the light bindings designer. It, it, those are just new objects that the light binding system uses. 
Right. I mean, the old old bindings that we provided in XE2 were built more based on the old uh, data binding solution we had in VCL, whereas the new uh, set of components we've provided now are more extendable and uh, more identical across both VCL and FMX. Yeah, and you can still use all those existing right. bind expressions and live bindings. It's still there's still a binding list component. You can bring up the bind expression editor yep. and yep. test them and so on. Right. It's just now the live binding wizard and the visual live binding designer gives you even more support. Right, for and, and quickly building these things. quick bindings were designed so that the visual does live bindings designer would create those components versus the old. Yep. Whereas the old ones will still show up in the designer. Yeah, and I also. Um, Notice for myself, using the Live Bindings Wizard, you can click on the form and just start with looking at all the different kinds of binding tasks. But if you want to zoom in on a specific control, right mouse click. I, I didn't even think about that when I was doing the launch tours in September. Right mouse click on a specific component, and you'll get context-sensitive Live Binding Wizard for that component, right? Yeah, and that's really useful. It's a really easy way of actually connecting a control to a data source as well. So let's say you have an editor of grid and you right click it and then you can just bind it to a data source. And if you have your inner base database, for example, in the data explorer and you have that selected, it will allow you to make a test connection and it's a really quick way of connecting a control to a data source. So trust the right mouse click yeah. on top of a control or do it on the form if you want to see all the different light bindings wizard choices and as we and as we mentioned in the in the demo earlier today is that you have to go to tools options to enable the live bindings wizard and right click and then once you have that enabled it will be shown for all your projects and, and I forget maybe you did this because I had to run out for a moment when you have very complex visual live bindings designs because mm -hmm. you've got multiple used units multiple data modules and you're all using this uh, you can control the visualization of your live bindings designer through layers and hiding and showing yeah so what the layer system does is it basically it changes the you can toggle the visibility and as uh, one of the uh, viewers here commented as you can actually it adjust the opacity down to really light gray if you didn't want to see them at all you could also multi-select by dragging a, a bounding box over the components or shift selecting and then right clicking to hide the elements entirely and then if you at a later time wanted to view them again you can right click in any empty space within the life bindings designer and select show slash hide elements and you can toggle which ones you want to show again there's also a tools options live bindings choice where you can exclude if you don't want certain objects mm -hmm. showing up certain components showing up right you can yes you can include or exclude there's a dialog right box. That, that would control the default behavior yeah. um, on a you know not application wide but you know on a system wide yep so that's right. under tools options live bindings right. Uh, There's included and excluded components, yeah. and we by default selected certain ones to be included and excluded. For example, the style book is excluded by default. Uh, we've looked at the different components that you're less likely to want yeah. to use within the visual life bindings. Like designer. key component based yeah. class and and things like that. Also, if you don't see in your ID when you right mouse click the the menu local menu pop up menu option for visual life binding wizard or sorry, live binding wizard, and too many visual like this. Uh, there's a checkbox in that saying tools, options, live bindings to turn on the right mouse click live binding wizard to show up. It's always in the live binding designer, the, was that the magic wand, I think, icon? Yes, that's that. it's in within the uh, live bindings designer. You can tri trigger the wizard by clicking on the magic wand icon, which is the last one on the left uh, tool palette. Um, also, there are two different ways, and I think this was... I showed this earlier, but there are two different ways of triggering the Life Bindings Designer. You can either go to the View menu and go to View Life Bindings Designer, or you can right-click a component and you can select to bind visually. If you right-click a component and select Bind Visually, it will pop up the Life Bindings Designer if it's not already open, and it will also select that component on the form for you, and then you can just drag to bind to another control. And if you want all these other units, data modules, and so on to show up, the live binding designer is form by form, right? So you need to have, make sure those units are used. Yes, you have to go file use unit and then select your data module. And as I showed, it, it's a good idea to also right click the within the designer and select refresh designer so that it can populate your view with any other uh, forms that you're using within that or any other units that you're using within your form. And you'll visually see those as things that are not in your specific unit they have a different color. Yeah, they have they like color this. differently, and they're fully qualified with their actual module name uh, in front of its node. 
Correct, and they have this kind of mustard brown color, and that's a good indicator, basically, of the fact that it doesn't live within your current form. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's one. Ahmed goes, in WPF, it is easy to assign a folder path that contains images to a binding source of list box, and you get these images loaded as items. How can I do the same thing in live bindings? Uh, well, in VCL, we have the imageless component that you could use, and I've, I've done this in the past. You could use the imageless component, and then you could bind it to your data source that just contains images. You can write a little basic app that um, allows you basically take all your images that are in a folder and then put them into an interface database mm -hmm. or XML file. But you could also, if you had your interface database and you had uh, an image property that has all your images loaded, you can just bind that to your list box. Um, one of the examples that I showed is if you're initiating a binding between your data source and the list box, you can actually change the list box style to Metropolis UI, which exposes a member for a bitmap or an icon. And, you, and then you could bind your bitmap property from your data source to the icon property of your list box. Mm -hmm. That would be one way of doing it. Yeah. I know there's been uh, blog posts about all sorts of things people want to do with lists. Mm -hmm. with list boxes and how to bind enumerations and other mm -hmm. things into lists. I think uh, it was either Marco or Bob did a talk over in Europe when I was there about all sorts of things. So maybe we'll have to create a few more videos to show people how to, you know, the steps to to give in a certain scenario, like a, a set of images or a database that has a whole bunch of images and how to bind, to bind those into a list box of images in FireMonkey, for example, where you can have list boxes, all sorts of things. Which is one of the great things about CodeRage because you find out about other topics that people yeah. want to find out about, and we can do videos, blog posts, etc., on those. So that's really good. Yep. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. There was another one about components. Let's see, that reads folders for those images. Could you bind a component? And, and again, um, We'll have to make sure that we'll, we'll cover that either in a blog post. I know Henry is actively taking notes yeah. over here next to me, so we'll be covering that either in a blog post or, or um, a little video. A little video. Yeah, there's all sorts of use cases. It would be great to have. And if, it, if it's not easy to do, I know the team wants to make tough things easy, and that was the whole goal of the wizard and the visual light bindings designer, that you can just drag and drop. I know people are thinking about how do I do bi-directional things and it, it depends on if the property of the component uh, is itself bi-directional, right? right? Like a client data set can be bi-directional, a column inside of a data set, but for example, a, a label caption, you can't edit the label of a, I mean, you can send bind to the cap, uh, sorry, the text property of a label right. or the caption property in VCL of a label, but there's no way to edit, there's no way to send the contents of a label, because you can't change it in visually. another direction right. visually. You right. can do it in code. Right. Uh, so there's certain things that are read-only. If you have a read-only property, for example, mm -hmm. uh, then it can't be bidirectional. And and the the live binding designer respects that, right? It it shows you when you bind things uh, if it's a one directional or if it's a bidirectional. And I think in the old binding system, you could choose whether you wanted a one direction or a, a bidirectional binding in addition. But you'll see that happen. Drag a client data set down, put a put an edit box to it, mm -hmm. connect it through, you know, through binding like bindings or connect it uh, in, in in a different way. And you'll see that since that's a bidirectional, unless it's a read-only data set. Yeah, you can you you will see that indicated by the arrows. So yeah. you see an arrow pointing one way or, or in two directions. Yep. Yeah. And again, the the the, the live binding designer and the binding engine respects the 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 what is provided inside of properties of components, whether they're read write, read only. I guess you could have I don't know put a write order in the property, but okay, fine, that's all right. Uh, and then Rick is saying thanks, Serena and Henry. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining the session. Yep.